Good morning to you. I'm down at my local nature reserve this morning. Behind me you might be able to see the visitor's centre which has been newly built. Um, I've spoken from here before. It's uh, got some beautiful pathways actually down here but um, <clears throat> for a little while now I haven't been able to walk too much because uh, I sprained my ankle and uh, it's a bit swollen on the left hand side. It's been like that now for a, a little while so uh, I'd appreciate uh, your prayers for my speedy healing so I can get back to walking normally again. But um, the reason I'm down here of course is to share something of the Word of God with you and uh, I want to talk about somebody who's in the news quite a lot now and uh, seems to be rising in prominence and uh, we'll have a look at what he has to say and what's actually going on. I'll talk to you in a minute. So good morning to you again. As I say, I'm down here in our local uh, nature reserve. It's called the Carlton Marshes. And it's a lovely spot. And at the moment, it's fairly quiet. I want to start by just reading you a, a scripture to uh, be a bit of a backdrop to what I want to say. It's Psalm 14. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread, and call not upon the Lord? There were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. You have shamed the counsel of the poor, because the Lord is his refuge, Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion, when the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Especially that, a lot of things strike me in that scripture, really, before I even speak about what I want to talk about, because uh, one can see here the messianic hope for the coming Messiah. Is there not one that can do good? Of course, uh, they had to wait, didn't they, in the Old Testament days, a long time before that one would come. And uh, as it says here, Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. And many people, of course, are, are looking towards that salvation to come a second time, the Lord Jesus Christ. But until then, until then, things are happening. I spoke yesterday... Uh, about the um, coming together of um, all the different events over the last two years and uh, one or two of you pointed out some things I'd missed out. Yesterday we spoke about all the, uh, the things that had happened since the uh, disease, the C disease came along and um, of course there were many things also that occurred on the uh, on the financial level. And uh, I hadn't spoken yesterday about the disruption of supply chains and uh, the artificial um, scarcity of different items and the way that uh, resources are being manipulated. And of course we know that it all has one agenda. And there are certain men that are prominent in the, uh, say that the moving and shaking of that agenda, the way that things are changing. And the biggest way that things are changing are in, are in the digital world. And uh, there's a man that's at the spearhead of this. He's not actually a scientist, he's a historian. And uh, I want to quote a few things that he speaks about. His name is Yuval Noah Harari. He's an Israeli historian. I think he lectures in the Hebrew University, he's a professor. But he goes around the world speaking at uh, different places and he's mainly speaking about the digital revolution 
which uh, he's his uh, his handler, who is Klaus Schwab, because he's actually the um, one of the advisors to Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum. And uh, he actually speaks about what is known as the Fourth Industrial Revolution. And uh, you'll hear Klaus Schwab using that phrase quite a lot. But I want to focus this morning on, on this man, Harari. He is extremely dangerous. And he's dangerous for one basic reason. He's a speaker of... Um, he's, he's, a, he's a purveyor of mixed messages. And as you know, the media have a great way of manipulating us in these days with mixed messaging. Because what this man does is he, he tends to, to speak as though he's on the side of the people. But at the same time, he's spearheading and promoting the ideas that he comes out with um, as though they can benefit mankind. And, and this, of course, causes confusion. But uh, I want to just quote a few things that he says. And uh, they're really quite striking and, 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 and quite horrific. I've got uh, three of his sayings here. He says this. Firstly, you don't need to wait for Jesus Christ to come back in order to overcome death. A couple of geeks in a laboratory could do it. Number two, he says, we'll have the possibility of upgrading humans into superhumans. We are giving up on God but we will turn ourselves into new kinds of gods. Maybe we'll acquire divine abilities through ourselves. Number three. The 21st century will see the emergence of a new class of useless people. People who have absolutely no economic value. Up to 50% of the jobs will be taken over by artificial intelligence and computers. It will do better than humans. So here's a man that speaks about a massive change that's going on. He also speaks about Silicon Valley. Um, we won't need temples. We won't need places of worship. The new place of worship will be Silicon Valley. And that's where the new gods are going to come from. He calls it the techno-religion. But as I said, he's full of contradictory statements. He seems to use negative he sees the negative effects of these things. He actually warns about the negative effects of, of, of these things that are coming up. But nevertheless, he's Klaus Schwab's master, mouthpiece, which I found amazing. Being a historian, he understands the feudal system. He knows that it's always been a small elite that um, want to control things. And so uh, we know that he's a man who... Um, understands the agenda, he even warns against it, but at the same time, he's, he's propagating it. He talks about surveillance. He speaks about technological surveillance, total surveillance. And he says that up to now, men have had cameras, they've had ways of looking at others and spying. And uh, we know that that's the case, of course. We, Britain itself is probably one of the most watched societies on Earth with all our digital cameras. But now he's saying that was on top of the skin. Surveillance is now going to go under the skin. He talks about the monitoring of our blood pressure, our eye movements, our brain activity. Can you imagine that? Having everything about your human body monitored, tracked and surveilled every day. He says it won't be about the things that you buy and the way that you do commerce. It'll be about the way that you, you think, the way that you feel. And these are the things that are going to motivate this artificial intelligence to provide you with everything that you need. But at the same time, it's going to be watching you 24-7. He even draws the analogy of Noah's Ark. He says that there's going to be a technological Noah's Ark for the elite. But he also says that those elite that will get into that technological Noah's Ark will be at the expense of the rest drowning. He knows that that's the plan of the New World Order, but yet there he stands with Klaus Schwab promoting the New World Order. So we see that this is a man who... Um, the subtlety 
is what what speaks to my uh, to my mind this morning about this. He doesn't come with a loud, powerful voice, but he does carry some weight. And knowledge is power. And people are starting to hang on this man's every word. He says this as well. He says, you will not see new religions coming from the Middle East, but from Silicon Valley. New techno-religions that promise paradise on Earth with the help of genetic engineering and artificial intelligence. They are promising immortality on Earth with the help of technology. He speaks about a company called Calico, um, which you can actually look up their website. Um, they're a subsidiary of Google. And he says that they're trying to solve the problem of death. One of the biggest things, he says, is that human beings are hackable. We can, he can get inside us. Computers can discover everything about us. He says that eventually computers will know us better than we know ourselves. So this is a man completely given over, given over to, to satanic powers. And the thought that struck my mind last night was um, concerning the image of the beast. Now let's have a look at Revelation 13 again. I won't go into the part of Revelation 13 that speaks about the heads that's wounded to death and the one that's healed. But um, let's go from verse 4 here. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with him? And there were given unto him a mouth, there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell therein. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And I discovered yesterday an interesting thing. I discovered that um, they're now trying to tie up the digital world with the spiritual world. And... Um, they're drawing a conclusion that with technology they can actually hack into man so deeply that they can actually hack into the, the spirituality of man. And uh, I haven't researched this fully, I'm going to go more into this, but uh, I was really struck by this. I was particularly struck by the, the idea of the beast and his image. And um, as digital technology is increasing so we're beginning to see the image of the beast rising and one can see here and just my eye catches verse 16 and he causeth all both small and great rich and poor bond and free to receive a mark in their right hand and their forehead a digital mark a mark that will know exactly what we think what we feel what we desire a mark that will know more about ourselves than we know about ourselves. And uh, I'll leave you with that thought, actually, because I want to develop that and uh, see where that thought takes us. I just have a sense that there's more, more to this than um, we've actually considered at, the, at this time. So um, I just pray today, leaving that on a cliffhanger, I pray today is blessed for you and that um, you'll carry on praising him and that um, we should start to pray for those around us who we can see are fools that are saying that there is no God. Have a good day.